You know, as I look out into the crowd, I just wish that the families of gun violence in this city got this much attention because that's who really deserves the amount of attention that we're giving to this particular incident. So this morning, I come to you not only as the superintendent of the Chicago Police Department, but also as a black man who spent his entire life living in the city of Chicago. I know the racial divide that exists here. I know how hard it's been for our city and our nation to come together. And I also know the disparities and I know the history. This announcement today recognizes that Empire actor Jesse Smollett took advantage of the pain and anger of racism to promote his career. I'm left hanging my head and asking why. Why would anyone, especially an African-American man, use the symbolism of a noose to make false accusations? How could someone look at the hatred and suffering associated with that symbol and see an opportunity to manipulate that symbol to further his own public profile? Bogus police reports cause real harm. They do harm to every legitimate victim who's in need of support by police and, and investigators as well as the citizens of this city. And I'm also angry. I love the city of Chicago and the Chicago Police Department, warts and all. But this publicity stunt was a scar that Chicago didn't earn and certainly didn't deserve. Smollett attempted to gain attention by sending a false letter that relied on racial, homophobic, and political language. When that didn't work, Smollett paid $3,500 to stage this attack and drag Chicago's reputation through the mud in the process. And why? This stunt was orchestrated by Smollett because he was dissatisfied with his salary. So he concocted a story about being attacked. I only hope that the truth about what happened receives the same amount of attention that the hoax did. Hmm. It's hard to top that, so I'm not even going to try. Jesse Smollett now faces a felony charge for filing a false report claiming that he was a victim. This after weeks of wasting the hard work of a dozen detectives, resources diverted from actual victims. So what's the lesson at CNN? All about lunch. Sean Hannity's going to eat Jesse Smollett's lunch every single second. Tucker Carlson is going to eat Jesse Smollett's lunch every single second. The president of the, the United president States. The president of the United States That's is right. going to eat his lunch. What about the five? We want to eat lunch, too. <laughs> So that's Lemon's concern, that the reaction to the crime is worse than the crime itself. Notice I'm not saying hoax. A hoax removes the media's complicity. No, it was a crime aided and abetted by the activist press, who embraced their perfect victim, ignoring all those implausible details. So, Don, no one is interested in eating Smollett's lunch, but will eat yours, and that of the whole consensus media, who need a lesson in restraint in resisting its own activistic confirmation bias. Lemons made it no secret that he believes Trump supporters are racist, which is how Smollett portrayed them. So forget Smollett. He was just serving a function for the thirsty press seeking that story. Smollett, an attention addict with an anti-Trump fever, he read the room and saw that it was going to be easy to fool the media. And he saw all of those sympathizing friends, like Don Lemon, as suckers. They should be pissed off at him. But he couldn't fool the cops, or most of us. So if your only lesson is that Smollett will be used as fodder at this network while missing the fact that he played you, then you're as hopeless as we thought. You should have been thrilled that the demand for hate crime exceeds the supply. And that you don't means that it'll probably happen again. Hey, uh, uh, Emily, you are a prosecutor. Uh, what are the legal ramifications of this entire case? Lay it out for us. Well, for the filing the false police report, he could face, as we've heard, up to three years in prison mm -hmm. and then a huge fine. Um, and then for that letter, you know, there are, there are consequences to the huge mechanism of responses that is put in place mm -hmm. when you file a false police report and you allege a hate crime or you send a letter 
with a threatening letter to a corporation building that then deploys a hazmat team, etc. So for that, he could face up to 10 years in prison. Um, but I want to point out what I loved so much about the superintendent's comments. Eddie Johnson, he, yeah. He brought it back to the real world, which is that there are real world, real world consequences. And the hubris to me that emanates out of Hollywood, where this celebrity will take something so painfully large, such as the strife that has plagued Chicago and this country in terms of its racial divide and, and historical consequences and symbolism of that news, to shine for his own selfish gain because of a paycheck? That, to me, is, I, I just loved the speech by the superintendent because I felt like he, he brought it home to the real world. He said, this isn't TV. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. Juan, he did, I, he said he did it, they, or they claim it was because he was just dissatisfied with his paycheck. Right. Um, do you believe that? I, I, I don't know what to believe, yeah. but I mean, that's what the chief said. The chief did it. What, did you, what were your thoughts on the, what he said? Oh, I like the chief. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, and I think that he was very clear that his, in part of his disappointment, was as a black man mm -hmm. in seeing Smollett take advantage of the racial tensions in American society. But again, it's all about him. It wasn't about anybody else but him. I will say this. When the chief said he'd like to see more attention paid to things like the shooting in Chicago or what else, or especially to the as much attention to the initial charge as to the finding that this young man lied about it, mm -hmm. the chief's wrong. Uh, all the analysis shows that there's more attention now uh, to the idea that he lied because it's a conspiracy issue, it's a fraud issue, it's, a, it's celebrity gossip. There's more, to, and don't forget Donald Trump. Donald Trump has jumped in and said, you know, he was wrong and, and, and it fits in with Donald Trump's attacks on the media, so all the Trump crowd is celebrating this in a way that I... No, they're, they're just... Gleeful. They're vindicated. No, they're not. They're, they're vindicated. Yeah. Who said there was any need for the... They but, were accused. Again, they were the symbolic... They were the symbolic accused. accused. No, they, he said he put a red hat on one, but that wasn't the heart he is, of the charge. He also and the letter was said they were white. he was the victim of some kind of racial crime. And again, there's so many racial crimes. We've seen a spike in racial crimes in the country. Yeah. And he... This guy Smollett is so narcissistic that he is out of touch with reality. And the chief, the chief should know more media attention, more cameras at that police department today than ever before. Well, I, uh, we, we, we can talk to the end of time about your, uh, your misinterpretation of the facts. Let's go to GMA and let's get Smollett's own words before I get to Jesse. Why do you think you were targeted? I can just assume, I mean, I come really, really hard against 45. I come really, really hard against his administration. And I don't hold my tongue. If I had said it was a Muslim or a Mexican or someone black, I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot much more. See, Jesse, when I li listen to him, I see somebody who knew how to play the media because the, the media could be, that's the language that the media understood if you're an activist media. Right. The, he uh, framed 60 million Trump supporters yeah. and the media bought it hook, line and sinker. Um, Juan, I think what the chief was saying also is that he'd like to see that much media attention when there's a shooting or yeah. black on black violence or gang activity in the south side of Chicago too. Now, Smollett makes... Um, Reportedly, from 400,000 to 1.1 million dollars a year. 60 grand an episode, I believe. He does not have any children, mm -hmm. which means he is filthy rich. <laughs> so instead of trying to earn more money working hard, he perpetrated this hoax, and everything he accused Donald Trump of, he himself is guilty of. He is a liar, he is corrupt, and he mm -hmm. is greedy. So just let that sink in also. Uh, real hate crimes now are going to be treated with more skepticism, unfortunately, and that's what the police chief said, and I think that's probably one of the biggest results of this. Also, how dumb does Robin Roberts look right now when she went out there, didn't ask him any follow-up questions and let him perform like that? I bet she wished she had that back. Also, think about all the frame jobs and the conspiracy theories which we've seen all it takes is a little common sense you talked about it yesterday there's a bunch of MAGA guys and a polar vortex in Chicago hate criming people mm -hmm. okay um, Kavanaugh in high school was he really participating in drug-fueled orgies 
or Covington. Um, let's see, wait a second. A 16-year-old, 115-pound kid was confronting some adult like the Ku Klux Klan. And, and, and now Donald Trump, it makes you suspicious of the entire Russia investigation. What? Uh, he, Donald Trump is a Russian wow. asset. <laughs> Holy Donald smokes. Trump is a Russian asset. Holy you, you don't have any sort of doubt when someone says that. If you don't believe that there's any sort of suspicion when someone says Trump is a Russian asset, you're crazy, and you're going to fall for another one of these hoaxes. What about Dana? the what about the U.S. landing on the moon? I, I think that calls this this calls it into question. Dana. Oh my God. Well, I, a couple of things. One, so he makes sixty five thousand dollars an episode. His bail was just set at a hundred thousand dollars. So he's going to post bail with a, a week and a half's worth of work. Yeah. I wonder how like the AOCs of the world feel about this <laughs> filthy rich person yeah. being able to walk away free because you know, right? We mm -hmm. we need bail reform. The other thing, though, I really like what Matt Lewis had to write today. I'm going to cite him because I couldn't say it better. He writes for the Daily. He said that the desire for sympathy and the moral authority that comes from being victimized has replaced the desire for admiration or respect for some act of heroism. It was like victim chic. Mm -hmm. If you are a victim, then you are going to get more attention, and he knew that. But I do think it's kind of bizarre, though. He might, to your point, he was able to fool some in the media, not all. Remember, yeah. there were people on the left who were frustrated, like GQ magazine mm -hmm. wrote about the reporters in this case saying, how dare they use the word allegedly. Yeah. That that, they, that, that was whitewashing the idea that this was a hate crime when reporters were just actually doing their job. By mm -hmm. the way, Jesse, I think that with the Robin Roberts thing, we used the tape of the interview. I think that is an indication that she actually got this guy to say what he wanted to say, and for him, that's part of the indictment of him. It's uh, true. He set himself up. That's what I'm saying. So I don't think that's the reporter. I well, I, I think I would have asked a few more follow-ups. That's all I'm saying. Okay. No offense to Robin. When you I would have quizzed her on geography. <laughs> yeah. And uh, anyway.